Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus I'm from IGS Electronics and today is the day when we're starting Sensors Playlist. Sensors is something I, I find it very important for any automation or controls engineer or maintenance engineer or any engineer really that works in a uh, industrial uh, automated plant. So, and uh, those are the key aspects, key parts that uh, drive the whole system. So if you, if you don't understand sensors, you might struggle to understand and form find anything, really, if you don't get where those signals come from and how they're being configured and anything in between. PLC is just the, it's, it's, it's just the equipment, the processes, everything that comes in. And everything that comes in, one of them can go wrong and a whole plan stops. So the key is to understand them is very, very crucial. So that's why we are going to start checking them out as we go. So the first one in line, it's going to be a SIG UM30. By the way, I'm not affiliated with any of these guys. So uh, if, if, you're, if I ever will be working with any of the manufacturers, you'll be the first to know. So this, this guy in here, there's another thing what we're going to be checking out in the video is this sensor worth the investment because the price tag for this guy is from 350 to 400 pounds, depending on who you're getting it from staggering price tag for this particular sensor could go for some sellers I've seen even to go to about 600 pound a sensor for an ordinary person that's a PlayStation but then nevertheless this guy is packed with functions in there it's a, it comes in, these guys comes in the semi several different configurations starting from different types of distances like my particular one in here it's got analog output 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps it's got a digital output as well so for normally closed, it can be normally closed, normally open, and it can be a sync, uh, synced with other sensors, and it can have access to, as far as I understand, I believe, you can connect this to the laptop and configure it via the uh, SIG software as well. We are, which we might check out in the future videos, this guy in here, just laying around in here. And uh, also, uh, my specific sensor is going to be a working uh, operating uh, distance. It's going to be from 200 to three, uh, two, 200 millimeters to 1,300 millimeters. But it's what they call the, the scanning limiting distance is two meters if you want to push it. But its operating range is from 200 to uh, 1,300 millimeters. What does 200 mean? Which means, just so I don't have to repeat later in the video. So this is, so this is this head in here. So it will start measuring minimum 200 millimeters away from the head. That's a minimum that it, a distance. It has to be away from whatever that you are trying to, whatever the top of your uh, readout is going to be. So that's the key to understand from this particular sensor. So it says on the sensor in here, the, uh, the, 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 the minimum distance away from the sensor head. If you need lower than that, if you need closer than that, buy a different sensor again. There's uh, different types, different configurations, so uh, really, really good if you want to work with different heights. So my particular is, as I said, 200 to 1,300 millimeters. And what we're going to do, we're going to do the live test. So, so for me to really uh, try to uh, put the message across so you guys understand what can this sensor do, we're going to be using, as you've seen probably from a thumbnail, a bucket. So as you can see, uh, that's my top and that's my bottom. We're going to teach the sensor to understand the top and a bottom, we're going to teach the digital signal, digital signal, how it works. And also we are going to be wanting to monitor this guy in here. When this changes, we want the analog signal to come out and we're going to be using four to 20 milliamps for this particular uh, uh, application. So, so monitor when the level changes, analog signal changes as well. Why do we want to do that? So we understand how, first of all, how the analogs work, that's one. And also, in the next video, we're going to be connecting this sensor to our uh, uh, analog input card for our S7-1500 series PLC. And also, later on in the videos, we're going to be adding that level we're trying to achieve down there onto this guy in here to see how that would work in a real life application. So you would know pretty much what to look for. So yeah, that's what we do today. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so first up, we are, let's have a look at the wiring. This is the standard uh, wiring. Why are you coming? Why are you coming now? Stay down. This is the standard wiring, uh, standard cable coloring from a standard. A uh, uh, I think it's a five-pin cable. So we we have a blue, brown, 
uh, white, grey and a black and you will see in the sensor, sensor represents these colors as well. This is not original 6 uh, six cable, this is IFM cable. So as I said, this coloring should be standard, should be the same, you should be having the same as well. If you don't, then, or, then I don't know where the cable is coming from. So, plus and a minus is supplying the power to our sensor, plus and a minus, this give, uh, give, gives, gives, gives a life to our uh, sensor. White one in here is our analog output. So white one will be outputting analogs. So we could be the voltage or current, one or the other. The gray one is going to be uh, for communications or uh, uh, syncing other uh, uh, synchronization for synchronization purposes. We might look at those in the future. At the moment, we're not going to be using that cable whatsoever. And the black one, as usual, from all the sensors for standard, black one is your digital output, which is going to be on and off. And as I said, again, as I said, it could be normally open or normally closed. Because what we're going to do with this one in here, uh, this one, as you can see, I have my probes connected to it. So we can look at the meter as well. As you can see in the corner, I, right down there, I have my meter. So we can have a look at the analog readouts as we progress. So for the analog readout, the white one is going to be your plus and a blue one is going to be your minus. Okay, so uh, whatever you send in your signal, the blue is in your minus and white is your plus. Same goes to a, a digital, uh, uh, no, no, well, when I say digital, I say if we, uh, I'm trying to uh, activate a lamp in here. So that digital output is coming to my uh, plus part of my uh, lamp in here. And as you can see it in here, my little uh, clip on together, which is not very great, by the way. Uh, I'll figure it out in a minute. So both of these are coming together as, as, as a neutral. So let me, come on. I'll figure it out in a minute. So basically, they're basically these are they're both having a negative part from the power supply joining up together. So the meter can receive the negative part as well. So that's the wiring. Alrighty, there is the sensor. Uh, by the way, guys, this today's uh, uh, what we're going to be working on is going to be uh, for the water, but doesn't mean that it can only do uh, detect water. Any ultrasonic reflecting objects will uh, you are able to use with this sensor. So uh, first up, let's check out quickly out the menu. So you got T1, T2 buttons in there. T1 is more or less used for uh, uh, automatic teaching, which you can do now. So by holding it, it says teach. So you just learned my bottom position, which is the bottom of the bucket. So put a paper on top of it. Hope you can see my, my corner camera. It says about 206, uh, 272 millimeters is uh, from there to, to that point. And let's tell him to click uh, T1 again, and it says end. So now, I'm not sure you can see in my meter in a corner. Let's just quickly sweep the cameras. So uh, uh, as you can see, my meter bottom is 20 milliamps. You can change that to be four milliamps if you wish to. Do check out the manual, guys, how to do that. It's quite so I'll show you actually that in a minute. And as you can see, four millimeter, uh, four, four millimeter is my top. So that's automatic teaching. What if you can't uh, automatically uh, teach in the knowing position? As you can see in my bucket, I'm not gonna pour water in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure so I know my bottom, as you can see in the center, my bottom is 460, let's remember that number, 460, no, uh, let's say eight. So, and in here, that's 60, 62 to the top. All right, so it's gonna be four, 468 minus 62, we're gonna go 404. So, so we're gonna be editing these things manually. And to do that, click T1 and T2 until Pro appears. And let me swap the camera so you guys can see it properly. And as you can see, my digital. So for, let's first teach digital because I, I think I already taught it. So uh, the, we see the digital. So click T1, T2 to enter it. So it says, right, the first at the top position, 406. Yes, accept. So then is uh, the characteristics. I think it's what it's, what it's called in the manual. I keep forgetting all the time what that thing was. And that is to do with, uh, yeah, it goes for a simple switching and then there's a window switching. We're going to click, leave it a simple switching. And then uh, it's going to be normally open or normally closed the signal. We're going to leave it as normally open. You can change it, but if you want to change anything, just click T2, as you see. I'm not sure you can see my lamp is switching. Come on, change it back. So, and then say T1, T2 together. So here we go. Now we thought the 
the digital. So let's do the, 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 click T2 to go further, uh, go back uh, back in the menu and click go, go further. So now as you can see, you can see I appeared. I have specifically told my sensor to output current, but sometimes you will see U and I. That means it's an auto. So it will be detecting what the system is requesting, what sign of signal. I specifically, because the meter told him to be I. So enter it, T1, T2 together. And as you can see, this is the position that we thought at the beginning from T1. So when we did it, I did the first teach. So uh, that's no longer good for us. And we need to be, remember, 468 minus 404. Now minus 62 or something like that we had in there. So let's just give him, oh, we overshoot. So now we're gonna teach him. This is gonna be using T1 and T2 to go up and down. Uh, let's leave it at that. 404, why not? Bang, teach him. And the bottom position is 468, yes. Let's leave it at that. So now you can, uh, this is where you can change to be a uh, 4 to 20, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp is this one. And 20 to 4 milliamp is this one. So uh, you can change uh, how you are receiving your signals and how the signals have been read. So we're going to leave it as uh, 20 and 20 to be bottom. And yes, and yes. And here we go. We have thought our sensor how uh, the the bottom level and our, where the line is. Hopefully, we measured out correctly. So now, last but not least, let's quickly have a look at the the, the, the menu itself. The full menu is literally T1, T2. Hold it for until you see add. It's quite a straightforward. And here we go. So you can go into add and just use T1. To go along, so I'll quickly show you where to change that current if you want. I think it's A3. Check out a small manual, very straightforward, guys. Click and as you go, as you can see, I have set up to be current. You can have auto, you can have volt, and we're gonna go back to the amps. And every time you want to enter something or uh, or accept something, just click T1 and T2 together. And there we go. So we leave we leave the menu now. So uh, that's fine. So that's how you enter the main menu, guys. Again, it is quite straightforward. Read up in the manual what each thing does. So next up, let's go grab the water bottle and see how that works. So let's pour in the water and try to stay away from the sensor itself. And let's start pouring in. And as you can see. The milliamps are changing as the water goes up. Pretty awesome. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can get, I'm not sure how much water I've got in here. Are we gonna be able to turn on the digital signal? Not enough for digital signal. And not enough water to uh, 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 go all the way down. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how this sensor can be set up for the water. So, the verdict. I like it, it's a good sensor. Obviously we covered very basics of it. There's quite a lot into it, let's quickly show you. Do check out the manual for the fine tuning and fine uh, configuration. So it's right in here, look at that guys. Here is a lot of options in there for you to play. So what it provides uh, uh, when it comes down to value, you pay for it. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Be, be aware, guys, this part, this sensor is expensive because of what's inside it. There's a cheaper versions out there if you're looking for it that is from this uh, specific UM family. So uh, I think money well spent on it and uh, well, uh, and the reliability, the housing is strong. It looks like it's, it's, uh, the IP rating's been uh, properly sorted out. I think it's it's it's, it's a solid uh, sensor. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it does give you a good understanding how that works. In the next video, we're going to be using this sensor signal as an analog input for our uh, analog card. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.